Howdy, we're back. This is Lee with 82 Game at 12, and we are on Sons of Liberty 75. This will be video eight of playthrough of Sedgwick Attacks. It's the Salem Church fight. May the 3rd, 1863. And this is the American Civil War series, volume number 10. They're up to 11. Uh, number 11 is uh, the first day of Shallow, which is available on revolutiongames.us. So go check them out. This is a Sacramento, California company. And they are producing fine quality war games and uh, I've said this before but I'm going to say it again this is definitely my favorite American Civil War tactical series so now we're going to jump right to it but but just before we do that I want to bring up uh, about the flag The uh, let's see if we can get up better. There we go. Okay, so this flag here, okay, um, is actually not in use yet uh, at the time of this battle. Okay, um, they had used just the straight up stars and bars. And uh, I guess there was some confusion on the battlefield. Okay. They had actually had uh, a flag that was very similar to the, to the uh, regular uh, Old Glory. Um, and that caused some confusion. But uh, <clears throat> if uh, you're a uh, fan of uh, Robert E. Uh, Stonewall Jackson, okay, uh, then this is a book that you need to get to read, okay, S.C. Gwynn, this uh, was uh, published by Schreibner, and uh, it came out, of course, it's got a lot of praise, let's see, uh, 2014, Samuel C. Gwynn. This uh, book, okay, I actually bought uh, two more books and gave them to family members. I read through this book so fast I couldn't put it down, okay? Uh, it's just a fascinating book. It delves into <clears throat> the man himself, okay? Uh, a lot of biographies or books about Stonewall Jackson don't really, you know, take a look at who the man really was his religious beliefs and how those beliefs um, made him who he was, okay? And just the other things that, that happened in his life and so forth, okay? So I'm reading here at the back of this book, and uh, it's on uh, chapter 46, it talks about immortality. And so, after he, when he shot, he shot, uh, let's see, I believe three times. Uh, actually shot in each arm once and then uh, shot, well, shot in uh, another one of his arms. I think it might have been his right. Let's see. Uh, that shattered his uh, arm bone. And it was up near his shoulder. Uh, and they ended up, what happened was, he uh, uh, fell off his horse, <clears throat> which caused a lot of pain and damage, further damage to his uh, already injured arm, arms. And then they put him, of course, he was put in the litter, and then as they were transporting that, they dropped him twice, okay? And so that further aggravated everything but uh, he was sent back uh, 
from the front. And eventually what happens is he uh, has to have his uh, arm amputated to just below the shoulder. And he uh, is not able to recover and dies on May the uh, 10th, okay? Seven days after the uh, what's happening here in uh, this uh, uh, game and uh, about 3.15. But, <clears throat> so it says at the train depot, Jackson's coffin was wrapped in a flag in keeping with military tradition. Okay, uh, I'm here at the bottom. Okay. But this was no ordinary flag. The Confederate Congress had recently authorized a new national flag consisting of a familiar crossbars of the Army of Northern Virginia's battle flag superimposed on a pure white background. The old stars and bars, the first Confederate national flag, was considered too easily mistaken for the stars and stripes. The first such flag had just been delivered and was meant to fly from the roof of the Capitol. But by Davis's orders, it now became the shroud over Jackson's coffin. So that there is where the first use of this flag that, uh, that we see on the back of these counters. Oops. Okay. So this flag here was first used on Jackson's coffin. So. Okay. All right, let's get started here. I've added the, uh, all of the commander chips, okay? And now what we need to do is we need to determine the key chips and random chips, okay? I've already added in the uh, wild chips. So of course, the uh, Confederates have available for rebuilding or bringing back to the map, They've got two Wilcox, so they want to get that rally in there. So the rally's going in, and then the other ones I'm going to have to just, I just shake them up and I draw one. That's the thing is the Confederates, they only get two of these chits. And so there goes the other one, and then the Union get a total of four, two to choose and then two random. So they also want to bring units back in and they've got some units that they would like to uh, uh, actually rally on the, on, the, on the map. So they want, of course, the rally. And then they like that brigade reserve move, but now I think we're gonna to have to have something to help with an attack. And so we're gonna choose this. Huzzah. All right, and then here we just take these and we shake them up and we pick two and throw them in. So, I think it's better to have a cup, but I'm just shaking them up in my hand and then without looking, I reach in and get two and then the rest of them I just stack back. And then we get going. Okay, so the first thing we have is the artillery. So, um, I've got this unit here. We can actually fire right here. He's got line of sight right there. So. I'll fire at uh, the second South Carolinians there. And so we've, uh, that's a range of one, two, three, four. And 
that is a smooth bore. So, a range of five is effective. So we're within range, okay? The only modifier we're gonna have is gonna be the targets in woods. So we're at six, we're gonna go down to four. So, All right, so we got a 46, 44, I'm sorry, 44. And this unit CR is gonna be uh, a one, okay? Remember, he's in woods. Woods, you don't get any support. So that goes down by one. So it goes to two, and then we've got this shaking. Takes it down another one, so it's at one, okay? And we got 46, okay? One is still gonna be routine. 45, uh, no depletion, but five is retreat two. So this unit here has to retreat two, like so. All right, we put a fired marker here on that unit. Okay, and then uh, when we look up here at the Confederates, they've got uh, stacks of artillery on the way and moving down this plank road uh each each hex is is uh gonna cost half and artillery has a movement rating of six in this game so in this volume So half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six. Okay. And so they are now moved. Okay. All right. So then we come back to the union and what they want to do is they want to, they're going to move this unit uh, into hex with this unit. So that's their movement. Okay, and we go back to the Confederates. And so they're going to end up, I know they're going to end up right here. I'm not going to have to count it. So, see, they're still, they're still not close enough to get into position. So, they're going to have to spend maybe two more, two more turns just getting in position. So really, they're only going to be effective on the last turn, I believe. So, okay. And then the last artillery unit uh, would pass and wants to do a re, uh, regroup, okay? She wants to try to recover uh, or regroup, rebuild. So they've got a three and they're adjacent to an infantry unit. That's the only requirements. And also being, uh, I think it's what, three hexes away from enemy units. Yeah, three hexes away. So. So, three or less. 
five. So no, they didn't rebuild. Okay. So now we're ready to start drawing chits. Okay, the first one is uh, Union Fatigue, okay, and uh, I'm actually going to leave these on the map here so that I see them over and over and over, and I can actually remove those. Okay, next chip is Brooks, okay, so... Brooks or less, oh, we got a five. So that means either Bartlett, Brown, or Russell. Well, I think I'm gonna do Bartlett down here. Uh, and uh, what they're gonna do is they're actually gonna do fire combat here against this unit like they did last time. So they're allowed to combine fire if they're adjacent. So this unit here has a strength of three and then two, okay, without any modifiers. It was 62. And that unit doesn't have any support because this unit isn't in the woods. So 62, Strength of five. And he's got what, three? Okay, routine. All right, 54 is the depletion. And a retreat of one. So he's gonna have to do a break test. And, uh, he has a three. Okay, I rolled a four. So if you look on the break test, that's one over. Okay, so CR plus one, he goes to broken box one. Um, now wait a minute, he has he wasn't uh, depleted yet. Why did I think he was depleted? He just depleted. He doesn't have to do a break uh, right test, but he does have to retreat one. Yeah, retreat one. Okay. Next. Okay. All right, we got rally. Okay, so we can rally infantry or cavalry. Okay. Uh, rebuild. All right. Um, and with that, you can actually rebuild uh, a lot closer. So you just have to be two hexes away from enemy units. And uh, you have a plus two. So I think what I've... Let's see what this guy is. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do the do Russell even though hmm. this brown unit up here, um, he's actually got a strength of 10, but his, his CR is such low, it's so low. He can't afford to, you can't have him in the woods This guy's too close. 
So, yeah, let's try this uh, 90, 95th Pennsylvania. Okay, so when you're on the broke track, that's considered uh, supported. So he's got a, we get a four or less. And I rolled a five, so. So we come back over here. And we got McLaws. And can McLaws activate? Well, he got a five, so he's going to have to have a limited activation for somebody. And I guess Sims back there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Sims back here. So I don't want to waste some of these others. Goes back on the cut. Sedgwick. So. Sedgwick is going to try to activate somebody. Got a three. So. He needs to pull Bartlett back. Uh, so that's what he's going to do. So I can actually see, I can actually perform a attack so that I can at least fire. Of course, with those units. Not really gonna have much of a chance. But we can fire and then still end up uh, getting away. So okay, we're gonna do an attack with Bartlett's units here. Okay. So, this unit has a strength of three, and offensive fire is going to fire at the 3rd South Carolinian Battalion, the 
it's in the woods there. Their CR is going to be a two. So, and the strength of uh, the 16th New Yorkers is going to be uh, a one. He starts at three, and then because of the woods, he has to shift to the left two. Uh, we've got a 12. All right, that didn't work too well. So, these guys are going to move. So one, let's see, they're going to move one, two, three, four. And then this unit is going to move, and as it moves, we got opportunity fire. Okay. These two guys are adjacent, so they can fire together, but He's out in the open. <clears throat> Opportunity fires at half strength. So he would be firing at three and four at seven, or three and four separate. I think we want to total it for seven. So we have a strength of seven. 46, and he's got a CR, should have moved him. Oh, yeah, should have moved him first because he was supported. Now he's not supported. So actually, he's going to have a one. Okay, and I said seven and 46. Okay. He's going to be in tough. 23, retreat to. So, so now he's, he's, he's not together with his buddy there. So that kind of failed those plans. Should have retreated him first. All right, so Sedgwick is done. Firefight. So this can be played now or later. Yeah, that's the way it used to be. Yeah. By now or at the start of any chit draw. Allows all friendly infantry units in any one hex to each issue fire combat against an electrical enemy unit. Firing units may combine their fire normally. If any opposing unit of any type remains in the target attacks, the units may immediately issue fire combat back if the tech attacks have fired at it. So, I think what I want to do is I want to do the firefight right here. I'm going to back this one guy up. So, he's in woods. So, our strength, well, no, let's see, yeah, one hex. Hmm. <clears throat> he's gonna have a CR of three, though. I'm only gonna have a strength of, oh, no, only, yeah. Uh, strength of half. No, start at seven. It'll go down to four. So, yeah, I've got a pretty good chance. So that's what we're gonna do. Ooh, I got a 65. So, strength is seven, but the target's in woods. Okay, firing up slope has no effect. So we go from seven down to four, roll to 65, and they have a CR of three because they're in the uh, woods. So that's going to be tough. Ah, I rolled a 12. Okay, no depletion, but it does cause retreat one. Okay, so the, not all of them, but just, okay, that guy yeah, has to retreat one. She could retreat here. 
Now leaves that unit kind of susceptible to some kind of fire or com close combat. Okay, the next is uh, double time. So this actually allows uh, units to, to uh, like double their movement. Um, <clears throat> so you can hold the chip or use it. Oh no. You hold this chip and use it at the start of any movement. Double the activated brigade's movement allowance. Roll one die before moving any units. On a one or two, you apply the morale hit on any one unit in the formation. So you cannot play it on the brigade that has already used the brigade reserve movement this turn or has a has had a union fatigue event used against it. So all right, so that, that has to be saved, so I'll just put it back here, so. All right. Okay, so we got uh, Wilcox. This could be really one of the uh, good volumes to start off as a, uh, a new player. Six, okay. not, uh, not gonna be able to uh, activate anyone. He doesn't even get to activate someone limited. Because you don't really have uh, that many counters involved. You've got The Confederates have one division with uh, four brigades, and then they have one additional brigade, and then the Union, in this scenario, only have, they have two divisions, but they only have three brigades in each division, so that's a total of six brigades. And uh, the Confederates have a total of five. So there's not, and the other thing is you're not having a lot of key chits. So, all right. Okay, so the Confederates have a rally. And think I could either rally this Kinshaw unit down here, okay, or I bring one of those Wilcox units. I think I want to do, or I even have this Wilford unit here. Um, I think I want to do the Kershaw unit down here, so try to rally him. Now, he's gonna be, he's in woods, so his CR goes down to two, but he gets a plus two. And he's also, he has to be at least two X's away, he's three X's away, so, from enemy unit. So, six, he didn't pass. So, throw that back up there. Next chip. And it's McLaws again. So, let's see if McLaws can... Nope, we got a six. So... I guess it'll be Wal Wolford. Okay, so Wolford here. Uh, don't activate him. Put uh, McLaws back in. And what happens? And it happens all the time, even after shaking the cup up.
take out of three. So, he's, he's wanting to do something to, about Brown up here that's trying to sneak around. So, we're going to have an attack order up here. And so, got a 12 here. And that there is just to let me know this unit here cannot rebuild. It's from uh, the uh, Vicksburg, Prelude to Vicksburg. That do fallen timber, trees that were cut down and blocked to try to uh, reduce uh, enemies' progress moving around. So. So we've got 12, and we could add this unit. It would get us to 16. So rather than firing here, this unit would be reduced to two. And uh, that unit would have a three. Not a pretty good chance of getting any kind of hits. We're doing, we're better off at uh, 16. Well, yeah, yeah, that puts us in another, this, this moves us up, shifts us over one column to the right. So, there's no modifier there because he's in the open. 46. And this one is going to have a CR of uh, 3 minus 1 for no support. This guy can't provide support. So he'll have a 2. So 46 is going to be tough. 45, depletion. And the morale hit, free 2, and a panic. This unit's not close enough to be to panic. So we do have a depletion, which means we have to have a break test because he's already depleted. And he has a CR of two. And so he he doesn't break. He passed. So but he does have to retreat. Two morale hits and retreat two. Okay. He's disrupted. Okay. All right, so now the Two. This unit one, two, three. Here we can go. So we can go one. Well, we want to stay together. One, two. Alright, 
so here's defensive fire here and this one first all right so he's got a defensive fire of strength of five and uh, has to be shifted uh, to the left due to force two so he's at three 66 CR of three Routine. Uh, 11 is nothing. Okay. So now we have combat. We've got 12 against 5. That's going to be 2 to 1. So we're starting off at 12. 2 to 1. Shifts it 2 to the right. So we're at 17 19. Attacker has the higher CR. 2022 and muskets. No, smooth bore. No, it's not on a higher slope. Okay, so we're rolling on 2022. He, he has a CR of zero. Nope, I rolled a 66 again. I just rolled a 66 with the blue for the Union. Okay, that's severe. Uh, 14. That's not a very good roll. Okay, so 14 is going to be on severe. Okay, so it's both are depleted. And then a 4 is two morale hits and retreat all two with a panic of three. So. All right, so this unit here is depleted. This unit, was, that unit's going to the track. Is that a zero? Yeah, so this guy's 37th, uh, Massachusetts is going to the rope box three. Now, panic wise, this guy is going to have, he's going to panic. So he's already disrupted. So I think, let's see, on the panic, uh, I don't know if you have to take a break test. So I guess I've got to take immediate break test. Okay. So they've got a CR of. Well, that's two. And then they're not supported, so that's three. So they've got an automatic, they're automatically going to the broke box. Okay, to the three. So. The, the Union is just getting destroyed. Now we have this over here to protect to uh, to do. Okay. 
Okay, now he does have defensive fire. Uh, nine, this one over here. He's going to fire at uh, this one here. Cover this. Cover this one because it's the larger units. All right, so he, they are in the woods. Okay. So he's going to start off with. Okay, strike the four. Forty's five. And they're going to have a CR of three. Okay, that'll be routine. Fifty-three is a depletion and a retreat. So the top unit, well, it's going to be the stronger unit. This unit's going to be depleted. And. Uh, Retreat. Uh, yes, retreat. Yeah. One. So he goes to here. All right. So now we go to the uh, close combat. We've got nine and five is fourteen. That's two to one. And this will be. Uh, the blue unit will be the lead lead hex because they've got nine. So start off at eight nine. It's gonna be two to one. So we shift two to the right, that's twelve thirteen. Um CR let's see. Well here we go. CR on this side is gonna be less. Okay, so the defender has a higher CR. And that's because these have, have a three. They're in the woods. That means they have to subtract one, so they have a two. Union is in the woods alone. They have to subtract one, so they are at a three. So now we're at uh, 10, 10, 11. Okay, nobody's got a smooth bore. Actually, on a lower slope. Okay. 10, 11. 61. And he's got a CR of 3. It's going to be tough. 32. Okay, so we've got both. To, to be depleted. So we've got both. And then 32 is retreat. All two, that's the defender. So both are depleted. Retreat two. Goes to there. Of course, somebody can go into there. It would be that unit. Okay. Well, let's see. He retreated too, right? Which means I can advance too. See, that's some. I don't think I've been. I don't think I've done that in the past. Is. advance so it just show you so right here this is uh, page 13 okay underneath uh, 12.7 if the defeated enemy retreated two or more hexes or was broken okay the victorious units may advance two hexes the first hex advance must be the hex previously occupied. But then you don't have to, after that you don't have to. So, um, we'll keep walking this counter off. This Russell counter. 
So you know, we go here, then we could go here. That's where I'm gonna go. All right. The third guy. Wayward Union move. So Wayward Union move. these artillery units back so that uh, they can't be can't fire together so that's what we do all right so now we have uh, Brooks and we have to roll for Brooks okay he can activate So, I guess he'll move Bru Russell in. Russell's back here. Uh, and uh, it, uh, he's right here. So, if I, I can actually use the uh, He'll do maneuver, and if I use the march column, then I can use the road, and it won't cost half. So we can go one, and then one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half. So we just basically balk that from Wilcox's unit there. And uh, so that takes care of Russell. Okay, put Brooks back in. Okay, Newton. Let's see if Newton can activate three. So, yes. So he's got uh, Brown or wheat and brown's been hit pretty hard so i think i'm going to use uh, i think i want to get brown out of there so but of course let's see how these work Okay, now the double time. Can't be used if a unit fatigue event is used against it. So,
but maybe like the Union try to use the double time and then the Confederate player uses the Union fatigue. So you roll two dice. Okay. And this dice is for any stragglers, which one or a two means you have to put a route hit there. Uh, but then this is the new movement, which is only one. So they can move one hex. Uh, the only one they can enter is that one. So, okay, so that takes care of both of those. And Brown is finished. Newton still has Wheaton though. Wilcox, this is, uh, oh, well that was, that was Wilcox, Wilcox, the, uh, the first one I had was Wilcox, the, uh, brigade commander, got the flag, and the other one is Wilcox, the commander in chief, so, Got a one, so he can activate somebody. And I'm going to activate Kershaw. Down here. Alright. So, this unit. This unit. One, two, three. Three. All of them. All three of these. <coughs> so. See. I don't think you can, I think you can only combine two hexes with, uh, see what it says here. Yeah, or stacked in two adjacent hexes may add their strength points together. All right, so since we're at a range of three, I mean, it's going to be quartered. So well, this would be one. This one would be be two. That's three. Okay, so we're going to strengthen three. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. And he's going to have a CR of only. Two and then minus one for not being supported of one. So 35 plus the strength of three. Yeah. 35. Yeah, that's gonna be routine. 52. Depletion. And this good data result is nothing. So He's got a CR of only a one. Rolled a six, so he goes to the broke track. Broke box three. And now, who they were gonna attack, it's not there, but
can. Still a couple that can still reach. This guy can be reached. So, movement of four. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This guy, he's not going in there. He's actually going to pull back to here. One, two. Well, yeah, he'll go there. So here we go. One, two. Three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now, yeah, we better do that. This unit and this unit. Now, this unit here. be able to provide supporting fire but they're not able to combine it with uh, this unit's defensive fire so this unit has to decide who which one they want to shoot at and it's going to be this one the eight strength one so all right got a strength of six 11's nothing. Okay. Now, we go here, from here to here, and he's at half strength <coughs> for opportunity fire, uh, supporting fire. So he's going to have a three. But on strength, half of that is 2.5, so it's a two. 45. And that unit has a CR of three. Not not enough. So if you look here. Uh, three forty-five. Right here we go across to no two. Go across to your zero or two. He's got a three. He's got a three. He is supported. Uh, Battle-worn units can't provide support, so. All right, let's take this off. Now this is gonna be the lead unit, so this is just supporting. Okay. So we start off at eight, nine. So it's 14 to six, that's two to one. So we move up two to 12, 13. CR is gonna be the same. And other than that, that's it. Work 12, 13, 46, CR of 4. It's going to be routine. 44. Okay, that means we've got uh, under 44. Uh, so we've got both depletion and then the defender retreat. All two in the hex, panic one. Uh, there's nobody close enough to panic. But we have 
both will complete. And what does it say? Uh, four. That's three, three, two. So one, two. And then. Actually, move this guy in. That I could move him too. So I could move him here and then here. I think that's what I'll do. Okay. So that's all of Wilcox. Okay, I think we can hold this. Okay. Play it toward the end. Or you can play it now. Play it now or hold it to be played at the start of any chip draw. You deflect any one friendly hex and move, uh, may move every U.S. infantry unit up to one hex in any direction, but all such moving must end up adjacent to Confederate units. Can be subject, subject to opportunity fire. These units, even if they did not move, must then conduct a close combat. All Union units have their CR increased by plus one for the entire close combat phase and then get a two column shift to the right. So. Go ahead and do this. We're going to do this right here. So the 139 uh, Pennsylvanians are going to go right there. Okay. So, of course, we've got defensive fire. So we've got this unit. Defensive fire here. So six. Twenty-two is not going to be enough to do anything. Even at six. All right, so we've got nine to nine to six. So that's going to be three to two. So we move up one ten to eleven. Uh, they they get a plus one to their CR, so they have a CR of. Five, so they move up again, 12, 13. And they move up two more for the Uzzah. So they're at 17, 19. 25, the uh, third South Carolina Battalion has a CR of three. 25, so it's gonna be routine. 54. That's a depletion and a retreat. Two with a panic of one. So depletion. Retreat two. Here they could actually go again. Thing. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, fortunes of war. So the next chip who is Brooks? So, Brown does not get to activate. That's the only thing he's got left. Okay. I guess we've got one left, which is McLaws. And he 
you can activate. So, the clause is Kershaw. So, we're going to go here. So, Other two can't stack. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. what am I doing? I've got to see what I'm doing first. Okay, so I'm going to do an attack order, and then that means I get to do offensive fire first. Okay, so these two can fire, they're going to combine their fire. Getting ahead of myself again. Okay, so we've got a total strength there of seven. 65. And he's unsupported, so he's at a three. So six, seven, 65, and he's at a three. That's gonna be tough. 35, depletion. Morale hit, retreat two. So it's so right for him to get there. Treat two. The ones at the woods there. Okay, so that means now. They can focus their attention up here. So, One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. They all go to there. One, two, three, one, two. All right. So these these two are attacking here. This one's attacking here. This unit is going to fire at the bigger one. So that's five. He's got a CR of four. Roll to 55. OK. 
broadcast that that's going to be a routine. Number 64. Depletion and retreat. So, this unit is depleted. Forced to retreat. So now the combat is between this unit and that unit. So, okay, we've got six. Okay, start at six. It's one to one. They're gonna have the higher CR, so we move up to eight, nine. And I think that's gonna be it. 15. Probably a close fight. Uh, he does have a CR2. So. But yeah, it's just a close fight. That ain't good. 56. So both are depleted. And then he gets a brown head and has to retreat to. So they're both depleted. Defender takes a morale hit and retreats two. Like so, we don't want to go in there. Then we're going to do this one here. Okay, strength of three. Firing. 22. That ain't going to do anything. Okay, so we've got uh, four against three, so we start at four. Uh, <clears throat> Higher CR than the enemy, so we'll go up to five. And going across the stream, so we go back to four. 56. And he's got a CR two, again, that's routine. 55. He's depleted. Out yet, retreat two. So he's already, he's got to do a break test. So he's got a CR of two. Gets a three, so he's going to the box. Uh, he goes to box one. And then he shouldn't get advance. So this unit here wants to fire at the larger one. So he's got a strength of two. 54. He has a CR of three. Strength of two, 54. Routine. 25. He does get him to retreat too. Now this unit is going it alone. Okay. So we're starting off on three. Okay. Now he's going to have a CR of only two. He's supported, so he keeps his two, so that's even there. And that's it, I think. There's nothing else. Um, 33. It's going to be a close fight. 64. A close fight. That's depletion to the defender. And then retreat. One. All one. But that one has to roll on the broke table. Break table. Roll a three. 
His CR is a two, so he's got to go to broke box one. And then, of course, they could advance, but he's going to stay where he's at. He wants to stay supported. So McLaws tore those Yankees up. They sent, uh, geez, like three Bartlett regiments to the rope track. Sent them scurrying off the map. They, got, they could get back here and get take back over this right there. So, all right, so. Oh, I still have Newton. Laws is finished. So Newton still has uh, Wheaton left, but Wheaton just got knocked off the map. Well, no, he still got one right here. Okay. So let's see if he can activate three. So yeah, he can activate uh, Newton, Wheaton, and then he's finished. All right, so um, I think he just wants to try to um, he can defend, move one hex, and remove this shaken marker. So he moves to here. Well, he's got a movement of what two? So yeah, he could move there. Movement of two. So yeah. He could actually move a little further into the woods here. Or he can move that trail. He's going to move there. Remove his shaken marker. And that's it. All right, so that takes care of that turn. We go to six o'clock. Said I'd try to do two of these um, in, a, in a video. So let's see if we can knock it out. So we'll put our leaders back in the cup. Where's my claws at? Oh, there he is. Okay. Flip back over our here and um, we also have to move everybody here so put that up there we got those two guys, move those guys, move here, move there. Those come on to the cup. And then we have to uh, figure out which one of these, these we're gonna use. We know what we're gonna use for the Confederates. They're gonna use, of course, the rally. So the rally's going in the cup. And then I have to shake these up and throw one more. All right. Okay. And then for the union, of course, we know at least one of them wants to be, they want to be the uh, rally marker. So it goes in. And then here, maybe we do the superior artillery maybe for a change. And then uh, we'll have to shake these up.
we go. And if we look at the broke track, you know, the Union have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine regiments that have been knocked out. But if we look here on the map, Kershaw, his, his brigade has really suffered. Every one of his brigade, his regiments is battle worn. But they were able to cut cut the uh, Union forces down. And uh, I think this is an opportunity for the Confederates to uh, push out through here and uh, have an opportunity to, uh, you know, possibly annihilate the, uh, the Union. So, the Union's only got, of course, they've got Brown that has been depleted, battle worn up there. They've got uh, these two, uh, the skirmisher needs to change out of skirmish order. So, they've only got one, two, three, four regiments. One of them's battle worn. And then the, oh, that's uh, four and then five up there where Brown is. Five, six, seven. They got seven regiments, but they're about, uh, half of them are about one. Two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah. More than half. So, all right, artillery. Artillery phase. And uh, we're going to start right here with this one. Who's gonna be able to blast this one in right there? Um, so that's a uh, canister. here so all right so we go uh, half one one and a half two three four five six
This, this one here is going to fire right here. So, one, two, three. So it's got a strength of three. 16, no effect. Other artillery coming in, so that's half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, four, five. I'm going to put them not there, but right there where these two guys are at. they moved. And then this guy here is going to move here with this unit. Alright. Away we go. Check out the cup. Brooks. Two, so it can activate. And uh, so, what do we got over here? With Brooks, we got two Bartlett units. The rest of that. We got a Brown. So I guess I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to do a, uh, a regroup. Okay. So we're going to remove this guy's shaking marker. Okay, over here on this broken track. Okay, we've got this brown unit. Okay, I gotta get a three or less. I rolled a five, so okay, he doesn't get to come back. All right, that's it for brown. So Brooks goes back in the cup. confident can't be used yet so we'll put, just put it back over here and we got the gloss we go to six um, so with a six What is this Wolford guy going up here? He can't be up there. Well, he can, but I guess I was using him against, yeah. What if I did that? Yes. He 
I guess I'll just uh, activate Sims back here and then throw my claws back in the cup. Shake it up. And, ooh, fog of war. So we gotta roll. Let's see what happens. It's a one. Union Battlefield Chaos. So that means this is placed on somebody uh, where they can't. It limits stuff. Put it on this artillery. Pretty sure I can put it on any unit. their defensive fire is halved. Okay. Okay. Superior artillery. First time this has been used this play now or at the start of any chip draw phase. You select any one X containing USA artillery units and each of those may immediately do one of the following. Conduct an artillery step, remove a shaken or disrupted marker, of fighting results immediately. Well, I think we're just going to do uh, an artillery step. So we're here. We're going to fire here again. So strength of nine because it's a uh, uh, canister. And it's okay. Yeah, they're just dropping. Oh, I rolled a 16. That's what we happened last time. Okay. That's all of that one. Okay, Fortunes of War. Okay, Wilcox. So that's Wilcox, the brigade commander. All right. Okay. Rally. So, um, so we can rally somebody over on over there. Let's see, I don't have any Bartlett's at all. Let's try to rally this Russell unit again. It's over here on the broker. Uh, this Russell unit. Well, he's only got a two. We better try someone else. Let's try the Wheaton unit. I rolled a two. All right, so this unit gets to come back on. And we're gonna put one of these underneath so I know that he's, uh, can't get uh, rebuilt back to full strength. And then he just gets placed here with, uh, or adjacent to this unit. So we'll put him right there. All right. Okay, Sedgwick. Just activate somebody. And uh, let's see.
<coughs> Let's see about bringing uh, Bartlett back. He's got two units. Here, I'll try that one first. Okay, that one comes back. Okay. And then the other one, right there beside him. I got a four, so he doesn't. All right, now when you have a unit, okay, there is no other Bartlett units on the map. So when that happens, I think they can be brought back uh, just adjacent to any other unit. Just want to make sure. At least three X's from any enemy unit within three X's of either of the other two. Okay. Right, let's see. So from just the active brigades division. So I can put him uh, here by Brown. So, okay, so that's what we do. All right, and uh, that's all of Bartlett. Sedgwick's done. Okay, now we have Newton. And let's see if Newton can activate somebody. Four, four. So Brown or Wheaton, okay. So um, I think you'll I think we're activate down here with these guys. Now these guys. They could go into attack. Yeah. So I can't fire at anybody, but we can go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four. So we'll go here like this. All right. So we've got defensive fire, strength of three. Ooh, look at that, sixty four. They've got a CR of three because if they're stacked, they support each other, unless they're in the woods. So, so I said his strength was three, rolled a 64, and yeah, it's gonna be routine. Ooh, a 55. That's gonna be depletion and retreat two. Defensive fire is brutal. All right, so they've got to check for, uh, this has to do a break test. So, okay, a two is less than, so they passed the break test. Now, the, the other was a five, so that means the top unit, not all of them, but just the R, the, which would be the lead unit, or the top strongest unit, retreats. So I'm gonna retreat him to here, not into the woods. Well, I don't know, I guess maybe. 
I've got a retreat. Uh, he's got a retreat back. I can't retreat him that way. He's here he's dead, so I think he's gonna have to go there. Yeah. That's his retreat direction. If possible. So that's where he has to go. Which means this unit's not gonna have a lower CR. Okay, so we've got a three to three. That's one to one. And your CR is gonna be the same. So I think that's where we're gonna be at. Strength of three. 33. And so that's gonna be a close fight. Ooh, 22. The attacker is depleted. And the attacker takes a round hit and has to retreat one. So we gotta roll for his depletion. So he's gonna have a two. Six, he's going to broke track three. He's got it out of there. So. Of course, he could advance, but he's not going to. And that's the other thing. The defenders can advance. And I wasn't doing it. I know I wasn't doing it. I'm pretty sure I wasn't doing it uh, at other times. So Wheaton's finished. Newton goes back in the cuff because Brown's still available. So, we got Brooks. Two, Brooks can activate. And he's either got Russell, well, that's all he's got is Russell. So, we're going to try to, well, he can't, he's too close to Wilcox here. Skirmisher. Well, he can try to bring back, uh, he can do a regroup with, uh, try to bring back this one. Got a roll of two or less. Six, he didn't come back. All right, so Russell's finished. Uh, so Brooks is done. Rebel yell. Okay, with the rebel yell. Play now or hold it. You may select anyone from a hex and may move every Confederate unit up to one hex any direction. But all such moving units must end adjacent to a union or put a hex. These units, even if they do not move, must then conduct close combat. So their CR is increased by one, and they get a two column shift to the right on the attack. So it's just like the Union Huzzah. Huzzah, Huzzah. Well, really, the only hand, well. I mean, I've got that. I think I can wait. Yeah, I'm gonna hold this one. Hold it for maybe here a little bit. Ooh, there's Newton. So, five. So, limited activation, which means uh, Brown can't do anything. It's up here. So, okay, there's the Huzzah. And it's like, well, Beaten here can do the huzzah. So he goes back to here. And 
course, Kinshaw gets to fire. He uses a defensive fire. He's got a strength of three. 46. Three. He's got a CR of uh, three minus one for uh, being uh, supported, but then he gets a plus one for this. So he's back to his three. 46. Okay, so no effect on the fire, defensive fire. I would do the attack. So, um, all right, so we're gonna have five, strength of five. It's a uh, uh, number three to two, so one are up to six, seven. Uh, higher CR, eight, nine. And then we get the two column shift for the Huzal. So we're at 12, 13. 46. And the CR of two, this would be tough. Oh, 61. De depletion, and then retreat one. Okay, so he's already depleted. So now we have to roll for break test out of four. So he's going to the broke, broke, broke box two, number two. And then, of course, he could advance one of these places. Well, it would have to be this one. Now this one, where he was at. So, <clears throat> I think he's not going to do that. <clears throat> He'll stay where he's at. Oh, we got this confident. So, let me look at that. Confident. Okay. <clears throat> So here he can advance and then attack again. So we've got a CR of, I mean a defensive fire of five, uh, four. Uh, Road 11, no effect. Um, <clears throat> so we've got five to four. We start off at the five. CR is increased by one, but he doesn't get any column shifts. So he doesn't gonna have a higher CR though. So that'll be six, seven. Uh, 36, and uh, the South Carolinians are, have a CR of only two. They have no support. So 36. Okay, so that's gonna be routine. Ooh, a 64. So that's going to complete him. It says twice. I guess he's got to take two break tests. Okay. Okay, he's going to the probe box three. And then this unit could advance in here. Wheaton just took out two of Kershaw's regiments. Okay. So we got Wilcox, Commander-in-Chief. Got a two, so he can activate uh, somebody. And he wants to activate uh, Wolford. So we're going to activate. All right. So we're going to do attack. Now he's at a higher level. 
places those guys are. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fire here. Okay, one, two, three. So they're gonna be quartered. So he's at uh, 75. He's going to be at one, they're going to be at two, strength of two. Uh, skirmisher is going to be minus two, they're going to be at the C level. 54, and he's going to have a CR of four, three, CR of three, so no effect. Uh, no one else is in position to be able to fire. Okay. So. Okay, so one, two. Three, four, because this guy is a skirmisher. And of course, this guy has to retreat. So he goes to there. All right. Got this one up here that shouldn't be up here. One, two, moving down the trail. Two, three, four. Okay. Uh, these guys can move on this road. Yep, they're just going to sit on the road. Okay, yeah, one. It's not, they're not do a, doing march movement. March column. One, two. So we've got this unit. And this unit attacking here. Now they're gonna fire at this unit, defensive fire. So that's gonna be uh, defensive fire at, at uh, nine. Ooh, a 65. I've got a CR of four, so it's gonna to be tough. 61, two depletions, and that's it. So, this unit's depleted, and then the bottom one has to do a break test. This one. Three he holds. Okay. So, this is going to be the lead unit. These guys are going to be just adding support, which is uh, support of six strength. All right. So, we'll start off at six strength. Uh, and it's uh, 12 against six. So, that's two to one. We move up to 10, 11. Um, I guess this unit here. I don't know if a skirmisher provides support. No, I don't think they do. I think skirmishers do not provide support. Let's look here. Uh, where are the skirmishers at?
Yeah, they don't provide support. So, okay, so we were at what, six, moved up to uh, 10, 11 due to, due to one, uh, higher CR, okay, because that they don't have any support. So we're at 12, 13. And then 50% plus defender SPs or artillery, that goes four, one, two, three. So we're all, all the way up to 23 plus. Okay, 52 is gonna be severe. And a 26 depletion. Break test, retreat all three, and possibly panic. Well, yeah, it is going to be panic. Um, so, break test, I mean, a depletion, then a break test. Okay. So, their CR is a two. They're destroyed. Artillery doesn't get to go to the broke, broken track. They just get destroyed. Okay, and then so these guys here. Okay, they're not. All right, so this unit can move here, and this unit has to move away. So. All right. So, Mr. Kershaw, Got rally. So, um, I think I want to try to rally. It's one of these Kershaw units. I'll try to rally this one here. So, that one there. It's a plus two for the rope to the to the CR. So CR is a five. Oh, I rolled a six. Wow. Okay. And then we have a loss. I got a two. Okay, so that means uh, Mahone or Wolford. Can I actually do Wolford again? I think we're going to do Wolford. We're going to do Wolford with an attack. So, all right, so the first thing we can do is we can do fire combat, offensive fire. So, one, two, three, he's not going to be able to fire. Here, one, two, that's half. Three, okay. So we'll go here to here, 50%, 50 so 2.5, so he's going to have a strength of two. And 
skirmisher hat. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, he's in skirmish order, so that means we have to. So we're going to be able to way over to C. 63, though. Okay, and his CR is a. Well, he's he's a Jason. Well, he can't didn't receive support, so he's got a three. So it's going to be routine. 45, yes, retreat two. So, one, two, like so. All right, and then here, this is artillery. So we've got a strength of six. These guys here, they can't fire. He's down that little We've got a strength of six. Okay. And they do have support, so but wait a minute, with the fog of war, I don't think they get support. Yeah, they don't receive support. So, we're going to have a three. So, 55, six. Okay, so, they're going to be routine. 41, routine, no effect. All right. And uh, that's it. Now we can have our uh, attack movement. Uh, we don't want to go up against that. Okay, so this unit's going to go one, two. These guys, one, two, three. Okay, and then these guys here. Those guys are going to move right there then. All right. So we are attacking uh, well, we're going to go there and then these guys are attacking those guns so we're going to go here first so this this guy here this uh, 23rd uh, new jersey they've got strength of two 45, and we've got a CR of 3. 45, strength of uh, 2, not, not enough, okay. So now we have the, oh, the combat, we've got 7 against 2, that's 3 to 1. Start at 7, 3 to 1. Shift three, so we're at 1213, RCR, 1416. And nobody's got smooth bores, okay. So 1416, where we're at. Okay, 25. And he's got a CR of only a one, so that's gonna be tough. 61. Here, that's going to be depletion. And one is retreat. One. So 
He's got a CR of only one. He's going to the broke track. I rolled a five. So he's going to broke box three. And then he's guessed in advance. I'll do that. All right, now these guys. Uh, they're at half strength due to fog of war. So that's three, 1.5 is going to be a strength of four, but then it's going to be uh, doubled. So actually it's going to be, he's going to have a nine. He gets a fire of nine. No, 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 no. Okay. Nope, that's not right. It's one and a half, not times two. So that's going to be nine, and then uh, four, that'd be 13. So he'd be a four, so that'd be a two. He's going to be a nine. So it's going to be six, like, like I thought, six. 52, CR of four. <clears throat> Routine. 32, no effect. All right, so they've got a strength of nine. And we've got 12. So, okay, that's one to one. We do have a CR, our CR. So we're at 12, we go up to 14, 16, and of course it's only artillery. So we're all the way up to 23 plus. 23, and he's got a, what, a CR of 3? It's routine, should have got some beer. Oh, we got a 12. Okay, so the attacker's depleted. And then the attacker gets a mark, uh, no, the attacker, let's see, no. So the defender has to retreat. All right. So, completion. And uh, retreat. So the only, only one we have left is McLaws and then Rope with Yale. That's it. So let's roll for McLaws again because he has Mahone left. Got a three so he can activate Mahone. So I guess I'll do it in attack order. So the first thing we have is we have fire to here. That's one, two, three hexes. So these guys are quartered. So quartered, let's see. That would be uh, 1.5. So 
So it'll end up being two, strength of two. Sixty-one. He's got a CR of two. That'll be routine. Fifty-three. Depletion and retreat. Now that means he's got a roll on the break test. He's two. Out of five, he's going to the broke box three. All right, so now they've got a movement of four. Stay here, don't go that far low. All right, so we want to get back over to here. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, all right, one, two, three, let me go better, these two guys, and, uh, put this down first, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then we have the Rebel Yell left. So, so I guess we could Try to take advantage of this again. So we'll use it right here. And so we're going to go right there. All right. So right there. And again, these guys. going to be at nine and four is 13. I think I rolled too high. Okay. Yeah, because nine would be 4.5. Uh, four. So that'd be like six. Six and seven. Oh, yeah, I rolled too high last time. Okay. 51. Uh, they have a CR of 3. So it's going to be routine. 15. It's going to cause them to retreat to. Oh no, actually, their CR is increased by 1. So that's four. It didn't matter. Fifty-one, six, seven. Yeah, still routine. So it's going to cause them to retreat too. So the rebel yell didn't get done. One, two, and that is everybody. So now we move to. move to the uh, 620 turn, which means we come over here to the broke table, move those guys, move all these guys, move these guys, which means these guys are not coming back in, these, these two groups here, uh, more than likely. Um, we got two turns left, and uh, so, and if we look over here,
Brown has these two units here, two two regiments. Barnum's got one, Russell's got one. Well, no, Brown has three. That's all that's left. So, and they're not going to be able to bring in enough. Even with two turns, it can't get enough troops back to to be able to push through. You know, um, they've got to have control of the plank road to be able to push through this artillery. Uh, once I get these artillery units down here, you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to storm that artillery. That's what is it? Uh, that's uh, four and eight, that's 10. Okay, there's gonna be a total of 10 strength if it's fire canister, you know. That's a pretty good chance of getting some uh, depletions and of course retreats, so. <clears throat> Historically, Sedgwick was not able to get onto the heights and capture Salem Church. And of course he sure didn't get to a Chancellorsville. What ended up is he almost got annihilated. You know, he got Anderson uh, and uh, Early. Early of course was was uh, part of the forces that he uh, met at uh, Martin's Heights on uh, earlier on this day and uh, had had to uh, uh, capture Martin's Heights, recaptured I guess, Martin's Heights to be able to push towards Salem Church and toward Chancellorsville. So this is turning out to be uh, very uh, historical and uh, I don't know, I don't I don't know if uh, there's really a, a way for the uh, Union to uh, to be successful unless the Confederate player just, you know, opened up the, the road and just let them stream through. I think the, the Confederate player has re really got to play dumb um, because they've equal, got equal forces pretty much. Uh, of course, the Confederates don't have the artillery, and they're not gonna, well, by the time it gets there, it's not really gonna be of any help unless it was, you know, if the Union was able to push and capture Salem Church, then, you know, probably, you know, at, at maybe the six o'clock turn, they would there be there to start shelling the uh, Union forces in those objective hexes, of course. Which could, they could shell them for a couple of turns, maybe uh, cause them to retreat and then have the Confederates re, uh, regain control of those uh, objective hexes, which is this one and this one here. Uh, here and here, and there's another one right here. No, that's where these artillery units are at. So there's the other one. Cox has got a really strong unit there of 10. But, uh, you know, with Kershaw coming out aggressively, that really spelled the doom for the Union. I think they've got to do a better job of of uh, just pinpointing an area and try to punch through instead of trying to, you know, maybe, uh, what Brown really only has is his three regiments are pretty weak. They, they're they not that strong. And uh, sending them, you know, around this way uh, to 
and try to get around. Uh, it's just not. You'd actually have to send them way around here to try to get behind. You know, um, if we looked here, you'd have to send them around this way. And you could use brigade movement um, to do that. And that might draw off some of these Confederate forces. But it would mean you'd have to get some pretty good rolls. Which Newton, Newton and Brooks over here, they have a pretty high value here of a four. McLaws only has a three. And of course you got Sedgwick, he has a four. So, you know, you got an opportunity to activate to actually move a unit, uh, a, a, a uh, brigade, you could move them three times with that brigade uh, marker, okay, that you could pick. Yeah, br brigade reserve movement, see? Pretty sure that, that you could use that Yeah, you, but you can't use it with the double time. So you could you you could move a unit, but of course, at the beginning of the game, you've got Wilcox here at the at the toll toll road toll gate. Okay, so you'd have to send maybe whoever's over here send them down through here, get them on this road, okay, and then have them, it does say River Road, so you could put them on that and have them, see what the movement track is, okay, road, only the plank road or the pike is actually going to give the half movement. Uh, but still, you know, you're moving six, so let me just take, let's just take this here, so if we take this, say you get, they come in, one, say you come in, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, and then you have the brigade movement, which is this, okay, so again, you go, you could just cut across here though, or go ahead and do this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. And then Sedgwick moves them. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. That's one turn, okay. So that's four o'clock. We go to 420. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Brigade movement. One, two, three, four. Because you gotta go up that slope. Three, four, five, six. Okay. And then you have okay, God, I'm gonna pull this up. So then you have Especially if you want to get over to this one, uh, because that's the one that's worth, I think, 15. Yeah, 26, 27. Yeah, so, okay, you've got the other, uh, so, one, two, three, well, wait a minute. One, gotta go up that slope. Two, three, slope again, or I can just go evade that and go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's see that's only four forty. So basically, you could go. What's that? Eighteen. 
So yeah, 18 hexes. So if you start here again, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, uh, that's now three, four, five, six right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, so you can, I mean, you can get there. But of course, those artillery units are going to be showing up. So, but, you know, the, the, the thing is, you're starting off, that's a gamey, kind of a gamey thing, because you're starting off with the, with the knowledge that um, Sedgwick didn't have, which was, he didn't know, you know, he just thought Wilcox was in front of him. And uh, he didn't expect the whole division. So he would have thought he could just punch through and not worry about going way around. Plus, his knowledge of the roads. <clears throat> he's not in his territory. He's in the enemy territory. So, you know, you'd have to say, well, you got to wait until your forces get to the Salem Church you know, before, and you get attacked by someone other than Wilcox, then you can then begin to try to, you know, work around. You know, I think that should be like, maybe added that Union forces are not able to try to maneuver around until someone other than Wilcox attacks them. And when that happens, then hey, then they begin to realize that hey, we're up against more than just Wilcox. You know, this is we've got we've got some Virginian Virginians here. None of them are the 28th though. So you know, this is all stuff that you think about as, as you play. You're you're wow, okay. So. It wasn't so easy. He, wasn't, he wasn't, couldn't just, you know, push past. One thing is the terrain. And the other is, hey, he's up against the, de the defense. Defensively, uh, it's just so much, so hard to try to overwhelm your enemy because of the defensive uh, fire. The muskets of this time are so so far superior to what was used in 1812 Revolutionary War, even the Napoleon, uh, the po Napoleonic battles, and so and cavalry was pretty much useless in this type of terrain. They they were uh, cavalry was good for. Uh, which of course you have the battle at Brandy Station. I think that's the largest cavalry clash of the Civil War. But still, you've got the train did not suit, for the most part, did not suit cavalry to be used as it was in the Napoleonic age. And the other thing is the uh, firepower. Cannons had been had improved, uh, more accurate more powerful and of course the musket and with the rifle uh, it it was not uh, wise to be running around on a horse especially trying to charge in an open field you just won't get cut down but the horse is too big of a target uh, in this of course in this game uh, if you look here Calvary Okay, increases the firing unit two shifts to the right. Okay, 
that's pretty important to realize. So you've got cavalry units, those are prime pickings to fire at. The horse is just too much of a target. The artillery really like to fire at horses. So, but see, this is this is what uh, I, I like about this game. Is it really gets me to thinking about different strategies, different tactics that that might have been used. But you also have to think, okay, now what did the what did the uh, commander know? What did the general know? And we can't say, well, we already know that. Okay, the clause's division is there, so uh, McLaws's division is there. So we know well we'll try to go around. You know, you you gotta you gotta know what you know, you gotta play within the the uh, the history. It's too gamey to say, well we're going around. You know, make them cut us off. Which okay, that could happen, you know. And, and of course they've got the trail. You see this trail stops right here. Okay, they would have to go over this terrain to get over here. So, and if they didn't, of course, they don't have a brigade, uh, this brigade reserve movement. They don't have that. Now, they do have the Union Fatigue. That could be played. But, yeah, I would definitely uh, do a house rule that, okay, if you want to go around, that's fine, but you have to wait until, you know, you're attacked or you attack a unit other than Wilcox. That would then let you know, hey, there's more than just Wilcox here. So, battle flags, okay, would, would one, one way help, but also, you know, you're getting your you know, you know, catch some stragglers and interrogate them, and then all of a sudden, hey, you know. But, you know, we don't have a lot of time here because four o'clock, Sedgwick arrives after already being engaged with Wilcox and Early. So, this is a fascinating system. And I think that all of the different developers that have followed after Herman Lutman have done an excellent job in providing a game that makes you think about the history, uh, makes you uh, want to challenge, you know, some of the decisions that were made. And you could do that. You could say, okay, well, I think I would have possibly tried to do this. I talked about that with the Prelude to Vicksburg. coming up with a different uh, attack plan than, than uh, Sherman used. You know, uh, one thing I don't think he, he uh, didn't recon the, the area for one thing, it wasn't reconned. Yeah. And uh, he, of course he didn't receive the support that he should have received from Grant. But, uh, you know, if you want to know more about that, just go watch those videos. And when I talk about uh, what a better plan of action would have been. But of course, I have the hindsight, you know, plus I know what, more about the terrain and, and the Confederate forces and all of that, but still, uh, you know, there's restrictions placed on the uh, Confederates, you know, and the Union really should have uh, placed their, their pontoon bridge elsewhere than where they placed it so okay so we've got two turns left and uh, I think I can already tell you that the Union is not going to win even though they do get five they do get five victory points just for finishing but if we to look at the uh, victory uh, for units that are on the broke track, those are the only ones that, that count, okay. Uh, 
of course, Rebel Artillery it gives gives the Union five, uh, four four victory points. So you know they had the five plus. Now they get the four. That's nine. And let's see. Kershaw, Kershaw, Wilcox, and Wilcox. So that's four divisions. So that's another eight. So now they're at 17. And let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. That's going to give them ten points. And then that artillery unit, that's another two. So it's right now it's like 19 to 12. But the rebels also get points for Salem Church. They get five for that. And then 24, 14, and here's Salem right here. So they get five there, three here, and then three there. That's, you know, they usually have the victory. So I just, I don't see how the Union can capture any of those objective exits. Yeah, they could probably stop them from getting the toll gate if the Confederates, but you know, the Confederates are going to get all three of these. So, the only other way that they can gain some points is eliminating some of those artillery. They get four four, for, four points for uh, each rebel artillery destroyed. But with them being stacked like that, you know, they're just, I don't, I don't see that they're going to, they're going to be able to get up there and do that. They've got to push their way through Kershaw and Wil Wilford. Plus, they've got to get some units back on the back on the uh, on the map. So things don't look good for the Union. Come on back, see what happens. I appreciate your support. Hopefully, you're enjoying uh, this uh, playthrough of Sedgwick Attacks. I suggest that you go to RevolutionGames.us and check out what they've got. I've actually uh, ordered. I think it's called Pacific Fury. It's, uh, I think it has to do with the Gu Guadalcanal uh, battle. And uh, it's more of a, it's a naval, naval uh, game, I think, more than anything else. But uh, I decided, well, heck, I, I'm enjoying these others. So let me try something else that they've got. Uh, so I'll do that and I'll, I'll bring it to the table and uh, maybe I'll do that before I do uh, the Shiloh because I do have that book that uh, I, I saw in the bookstore that I'm going to get so uh, that'll give me time to read up but I'm telling you there's so many historical people that were involved somehow or other at the Battle of Shiloh and I, I mean I don't I don't hardly, I don't know anything really about that battle, you know, or the people involved. Um, I know very little about Albert Sidney Johnson. Of course, he's going to be killed, but, uh, and that was a, that was a big loss for the Confederate, uh, army was his, his loss. And, uh, So that's not the same Johnston that was at uh, Bull Run. Those are two different generals. But that's uh, that's that. So. Come on back, see what happens, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.